Hey guys, so this is Gilbert here again and in the last tutorial we looked at how to install Grunt in your project and how to get it up and running. So if we just have a look, you remember that we um, added Grunt to our project, uh, we installed it and the node modules package was installed and um, we also installed the Grunt CLI so that we could run Grunt. But if you remember, when we run Grunt at the moment, we just get this error saying there's not a grunt file. So the one of the, the the main file that grunt will use in any project is called a grunt file. So we're going to go ahead and create a new grunt file. And it's just called gruntfile.js. And this file will be what grunt looks for when it wants to find tasks that it wants to run. And um, yeah, so let's um, let's have a look at this. If we go to the getting started section of the Grunt website, you can read through this. This tells you how to set up your package.json file, and it also tells you how to set up an initial Grunt file. Um, so let's just, just as an example, let's just copy this um, example Grunt file that they have on the Grunt website, and um, we'll, we'll just copy and paste this into our project at the moment. And as you can see here, they've installed um, this grunt contrib uglify uh, package that minifies your JavaScript. But we're not going to do that just now. So we're just going to delete um, everything that we don't need at the moment. And um, that's us. That's us now got our, our the basics of our grunt file. We also better remove this uglify here because we don't need that. So what happens in here is that in your config object, your grunt init config function, you're going to um, just put all of the different packages that you install and you're going to define all of the different configs that you want. So that might sound a bit strange, but once we um, install a package and set up a config, you'll see what this means. And the other thing <coughs> that a grunt file needs is tasks, because ultimately grunt is a task runner and that's what it needs to do. And so every grunt file should have a default task. That's the task that it will run if you don't specify any options. and Oh, any um, configs that we specify um, in, in our config function um, should be entered into the grunt task that you want to run. So that probably doesn't make much sense at the moment, but let's go ahead and install something. So we um, in, in the last tutorial, we looked at the fact we've got this um, simple uh, SAS file here that we, w we want to compile into a uh, normal CSS. So this is a, a kind of normal um, pre-processing aspect of a web development workflow. So let's go ahead and um, we've, we, there's loads of different packages for Grunt. You can Google for them and you'll, you'll find hundreds. Um, and so we're just going to use this Grunt Contrib SAS um, package here. And most of these packages come with pr pretty detailed and pretty well explained um, guidance on how to install and use them. So we're just going to copy the install line um, to, to install the package first of all via npm. So we're just going to do that. And remember, again, we're using the save dev flag so that uh, the package gets added to our package.json file. So if I go ahead and install that and let it install and then go back to our project, have a look at the package.json file, you'll see that this grunt contrib sas line is added. And that's because we specified the save dev flag. If you don't specify the save dev flag, this line won't be added here. So it's good to remember that. So, um, so our package is now installed. We need to add this line to the grunt file to load the actual um, package. Um, so if we go back to our grunt file, you need to remember to load all the packages that um, that you use. And then what we need to do is we need to um, specify our config. So what we're going to do is just use the sample config that um, they provide in the um, in the grunt contrib sas documentation, and we're going to use that just to populate our config function and just to, um, yeah, just almost as an example, just to show you um, how Grunt works and how these, this config object works. So SAS is our task, and that's um, with the package we've installed. And you don't need to worry too much about um, the options or anything like that at the moment, um, other than just to um, and put in here, what we're going to put in here is our, this is where we want to compile or tell the SAS package to compile our SAS files. So um, our file lives in the SAS folder and it's called style. 
um, .scss, and we want to compile that to the CSS folder and call it style.css. So that's going to take this file here, this is our SAS file, and it's going to compile it into the CSS folder. Um, and that's that's it, that's it for the config for the moment. So that's our SAS config object, we've loaded the package, last thing we need to do is to tell um, Grunt that we want to run the SAS task in the default task. And that's us, that's our Grunt file and that's it. Um, that's all you need to do to, to, to get your Grunt file up and running. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So if I now run Grunt, what we should hopefully see is that um, it ran the SAS task and it, done, it, it did it without any errors. And when we go back to our project, we'll see that the CSS folder has indeed been populated with a style.css file that's been compiled and uh, there's a few other bits and pieces like maps and a sash cache folder that, that the SAS package generates. But that's it, that's our grunt file. And so now every time you make a, a change to your style.scss, let's, let's just do that just to demonstrate it. Let's change this color to say 666 on hover. If we go back and run grunt again, it should run the task and if we go to our style.css file, we should see that change reflected. And and so that's it. That's um, the, the very basics of setting up a grunt file. And in the next tutorial, we'll have a look about automating your tasks. And um, we'll also have a look at grunt watch, which um, watches folders so that it triggers changes automatically so that you don't have to run grunt every time. But we'll look at that in the next tutorial.